We want to welcome you to a special Dream Week edition of Mission Park Cares. Today we're celebrating the amazing influence of Martin Luther King. And today we're going to visit some remarkable, incredible places that you're not going to want to miss. And we'll hear messages of encouragement from faith leaders right here in San Antonio. But first, let's check out a historic theater with events for all of us. You know, I'm here today at the Carver Center that so many people are so familiar with, but I'm here with Cassandra Parker Nowicki. I hope I said that correctly. You did, very good. All right, <laughs> and you know, I want you to tell us a little bit about kind of what's going on here at the Carver Center, the mission statement, if you will, but just kind of help us to tell our audience a little bit about what you do. Sure, sure. So uh, the Carver Community Cultural Center has been in the San Antonio community for a very long time. So this building that we're in right now was actually built in 1929, but our origin story dates back even further, that, uh, further than that to the early 1900s. The first building, I guess, that was here was the Colored Community House. Of course, during that time, San Antonio was still segregated. Um, and then it evolved into, into the building that we're in today, which was originally the uh, library and auditorium for the black community you know, during segregation. You know, Cassandra, we hear about, you know, the German influence or the Hispanic influence, but let's talk about the African American influence that, that is so prevalent here in San Antonio, and especially right here since the 1900s. Yes, exactly. Um, you know, I think often when people think of San Antonio, that, you know, especially if you don't live here, you don't instinctively think about the African American population that's been here all along. And that's one of the roles that the Carver has played. Again, geographically being rooted in the east side, which historically was home to the majority of African Americans during segregation. But this place has such an extraordinary legacy. I mean, if these walls could talk, I mean, artists that have performed on this stage, even back before we were kind of more formally known as an arts organization, you're talking Ella Fitzgerald, Dizzy Gillespie, Louis Armstrong. So when you think about the legends that have played on this stage, and it's continued on, now we have contemporary artists that are legends in their own right or certainly are building their legacy. We really look at the arts as a way to preserve, to explore and celebrate the diverse cultures of our global community. Yeah, okay. And so you'll see a little bit of everything here and it could be dance, it could be theater. Um, we do present a lot of music. Somebody who's very, very important to our world and to our culture and to our past and to our present and quite frankly to our future, Martin Luther King. And so I want you to tell me what's your thoughts, your feelings, some, you know, give me, give me something that, that, that helps future generations. I have 10 year olds and I want mm -hmm. them to know about Martin Luther King. Yes. Help me with yeah. that. I think that Martin Luther King Jr. would be proud of the legacy of this institution. Um, I think that he would be proud of the way that we try to embody his vision of uh, inclusivity, of equity, and peace. and peace here. For me, when I reflect on what I know of Dr. King, that's one of the things that I take away, is that we all have value, that we all have stories to tell, and that each and every one of us is important in that way and we need to be able to share our stories as a way to not only preserve our history and pass down our cultures and tradition but as a way to vision a better future. Tell us about how they get in touch with the Carver Center, how they know about it and how you get that message out. Sure, absolutely. So um, I would say probably the best way to learn about what's going on here is to visit our website which is thecarver.org. Um, we also are on, on Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, so those are other ways to access information about what's going on here. And you're on Mission Park Care. Y yes, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. And, uh, but I would say, you know, what I always love to tell people is just come visit us. You know, not just to see a performance. We have a beautiful gallery that showcases local and regional artists. So you can come by during the day, check out the artwork, we love to give tours of the space and just talk to people about what's going on and the history. And we also just like to have visitors. Cassandra, we want to say thank you so much for taking time with us today. We really appreciate you bringing us, you know, uh, up to speed on the, the Carver, as we just said. And we appreciate you more than you know. Thanks for all the good that you're doing for our community and for all of San Antonio. And thank you for letting us be part of your your life for just a moment today. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Now, let's meet Reverend Otis Mitchell with some inspiring thoughts. Then we want to celebrate some lives well lived. All right, good morning, everyone. 
Uh, I'm Pastor Otis Mitchell here at Mount Zion First Baptist Church, uh, one of the oldest uh, African-American churches in the city of San Antonio. Uh, depending on who you talk to, uh, very, very, uh, very old. Uh, we're 151 years old this year, uh, which is a wonderful thing. Uh, we're located here downtown at 333 Martin Luther King Drive at the corner of Martin Luther King and Hackberry. And I can look out my office window and see the Alamo Dome, so we're very close. Uh, this is a historic church, uh, having been led by the late Reverend Dr. Claude William Black, uh, who uh, was a city councilman, the first African American uh, to be uh, mayor pro tem, and uh, who just uh, for 50 years, led this church in a fantastic way. Uh, Mount Zion um, likes to be community involved. It likes to be involved in the neighborhood. And uh, to that end, uh, in honor of Reverend Black's uh, uh, late wife, Ms. Nona Black, we are building a community center uh, that is under construction as we speak. And by uh, July should be completed. And in that community center, we're going to be able to do uh, after school programs, preschool programs, and uh, adult uh, daycare programs, and some counseling that would allow the community to have a place to come and to do things. Uh, we want to be uh, serving of everybody in the neighborhood. Uh, this week is Dream Week and uh, for Martin Luther King Jr. and we really get excited about that. Uh, we have uh, uh, participation in the city's uh, MLK. I am a past MLK chairman, and so we participate in all of the Dream Week activities, like uh, this is a Sunday, so there's going to be uh, several programs throughout the city. There's gonna be the interfaith service uh, that's going to be held today. There's going to be the reef laying ceremony uh, there, uh, uh, at New Brothel Street. And uh, so we're just gonna be participating in those services here at Mount Zion. Uh, I actually do uh, impersonations of Dr. King uh, in his voice, which I've been doing, oh my God, uh, let's just say a long time. And uh, even before the King family, uh, when he says, you know, I have a dream that one day. So, you know, I take his voice and his words and do that. And so we do that throughout the year. Again, come on and visit us. Uh, I'll do the best I can to make you feel right at home. 333 Martin Luther King Drive. Thank you very much. Kristen, you went to an archive museum with some great exhibits. I sure did. Let's go see what's happening right now at SACAM. I'm here with Deborah Jarman with SACAM. Tell us, what does SACAM stand for? Kristen, SACAM is the San Antonio African American Community Archive and Museum. That's a long name, but we have an abbreviated mission. Our mission is simple, to collect, preserve, and share the African American cultural heritage of the San Antonio region. Maybe that is about as long as the name. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> so how did the archive and the museum get started? We were founded in 2017 by Everett Fly, who's a National Humanities Award winner, and George Frederick, a community advocate. Everett Fly is a landscape architect, and he has done a lot of work around San Antonio and actually the nation, which is the reason why he got the award. Um, and he discovered that when San Antonio was celebrating the tricentennial, that there were two references to African Americans. And he said, this is not good enough. We need a space where we can celebrate black history and also collect more of the history that is in San Antonio because we need to know. So tell us about a little bit about some of the exhibits that are in the museum now. They come down during Dream Week. What will they see? Starting over here, we have an exhibit in partnership with VIA, our public transportation system. And what's interesting about this exhibit and Dream Week, Rosa Parks actually was here in San Antonio and was able to ride on one of our buses. So the exhibition here talks about the um, civil rights journey around transportation and as it relates to San Antonio. So we're standing in the Fourier uh, exhibit which is sponsored by St. Phillips. I know you were there today. So this is a timeline of 
events and a few of the African-American icons in San Antonio. And so the story starts in 1529 and it goes around until 1975. But the story doesn't end there. We have over 7,000 pieces in our archive and over 300 pieces in our physical collection, which leads us to the room which houses our rotating exhibit. And all of this information was gathered from our archive. We are celebrating the life of Mr. Eugene Coleman, who used his talents to create, to advocate, and to empower the African-American community, really the community at large here in San Antonio. So Martin Luther King inspires people from all walks of life, every race, every gender, every age. How does Martin Luther King inspire you? You know, Kristen, my mother was born in Selma, Alabama, and I remember not being able to drink out of the refrigerated water fountain when we, when we would go to town in Selma. Um, that hasn't been that long ago. When I think about everything that he did and the people that worked with him, so that didn't have to happen to my children and to my grandchildren. When I think about the uh, power of love, the power of nonviolence, the fact that if everyone is not free, then no one is free. All of that really resonates with me. So what my personal mission is to leave a legacy of love and service for my family and my community. And that's what Dr. King did. So before we say goodbye, uh, how, how can someone find this place? Will you tell us where we are? Absolutely, we are on the corner of Nueva and South Presa. The address is 218 South Presa. We're open every day, Monday through Saturday from 10 to 6, and Sundays from 11 to 4. And did I say there's no admission? There's no admission. Oh, that's just <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> oh, and also, our website is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, and 366 <laughs> for leap year, and that's sacam.org. <laughs> I love it. Now let's head to the river for a very special blessing. Here's Reverend Johnny Toy. Good morning and welcome. This Sunday being the Sunday before Martin Luther King Day, I would like to share with you a scripture thought from the book of Psalms, Psalm 133. It says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that runs down upon the beard even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments, as the dew of Hermon, as the dew that descends upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessings, even life forevermore. And as we sit on the cusp of recognizing the life of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, a real, real brief sermon thought, united we stand. As a people on Monday, January the 16th, here in San Antonio, many people of all denominations, of all colors, creeds, sexes, everybody will blend and come together to march in one of the largest marches commemorating the life of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King here in San Antonio, Texas. United we stand. As a people, I'm quite sure Dr. King is looking down from heaven, smiling because we have seemingly, I use that word, seemingly achieved all that they strive for, unity among the people of God. So as we come together on Monday, January the 16th, commemorating the life of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, I would ask each and every one of us that we remember God's righteousness, we remember God's faithfulness, we remember God's salvation, and we remember God's truth. And I ask and I pray that as we come together, far beyond and far before, the third Monday in January, the national holiday, rec recognizing the life of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Remember all of the people, all of the people who fought for equal rights for humankind. United, we stand. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We ask and we pray that as we go far beyond this Sunday and far beyond 2023, continue to be our strength and guide because in the very currency that we spend, it's printed, and God we trust, and we trust you 
We praise you, we magnify and glorify your name, amen. Thank you, Johnny Toy. Now let's take a few moments to pay tribute to Dr. Martin Luther King. And we're gonna share some beautiful music from Monica Moore. This is Precious Lord, Take My Hand. a wonderful art collection to share with us. I sure do, and it's at St. Philip's College. Dr. Adina Lawson is gonna tell us all about it and really what Martin Luther King means to her. It's a brand new year for me today, and I'm here with Dr. Adina Lawson, and I tell you what, uh, she does things the right way. We are actually in a Bowden Gallery that's named is from the gifts from the art collection of the Honorable Lila Cockrell. Wonderful lady. So we are standing in our um, portrait gallery of all of the artwork that has been donated to St. Philip's College from Lila Cockrell. And she was a wonderful lady and for anybody who out there that doesn't know, she was uh, on our city council and became mayor and ran this city for a long time. And what they didn't know, they may not know, is that she also collected African American art. That is what's incredible. You know, and you shared that with us in one of our earlier meetings and one of our earlier visits and I want you to tell me a little bit about some of this art like this. Mr. Coleman right here. You know, when Lila donated her artwork to us with the first seven pieces that we brought back here, five of the artists graduated from St. Philip's College. It's just amazing, it's just beautiful, and you're so fortunate to have this collection all in one place. And y'all built a room around this art, did you not? When we re were redesigning this floor, and we were initially thinking about having artifacts in this room for uh, Artemisia Bowden, our founding president. But then we started thinking about other possibilities. And so with that, um, I called her. I called Lila up and I just cold called and said, 
introduced myself and told her where I was, and then I, I understood that she had African American art, and if she was interested in donating art to St. Philip's College. And as a result of that, she told me she had already made a commitment to another museum here in town, which I won't call names. But then the person said to me, well, Adina, you know, if you get her over here and show her that she would have her own climate control space, she might be willing to give it. So she came, she toured, and then the rest is history. You know, I'm gonna ask you another question. I'm gonna kind of change gears a little bit. You know, a little earlier today, you know, there was something that came across me, like a, kind of like a heat wave, and it was pretty special. A heat and, wave, okay. Yeah, it was really nice. It was something that, that was very, very meaningful to me because uh, I think that you might dabble in jewelry. Is that possible? Yes, it is. I am, that is a, that's a passion of mine. Actually, when my father died, when, when dad had died, I wanted to put down a memorial, a marker. And so my sister was a jewelry maker, so I started making jewelry. And that has been um, a relief valve, a pleasure, an opportunity. And all of the jewelry that I have made, the majority of it has been for St. Philip's College and donating proceeds to well, as you're going to see a scholarship. On this, as you're going to see on this show, Doctor, my wife is wearing a piece of it right now. She is? She is. <laughs> Kristen has a piece of your, your, your jewelry. So I'm going to ask you another question that I think is absolutely crucial that we discuss about, which yes. is Martin Luther King. You know, this is a guy who had to be, you know, a lot of anxiety, you know, in the life that he was living. But that being said, me how you feel about Martin Luther King. He made a difference. He truly did make a difference. Perhaps the differences came when he made the greatest difference and the greatest impact was after his assassination, sadly, but sometimes it happens that way. I'm from the South. I'm from the segregated South. I was never in an integrated environment until I went to graduate school in 1973 because I grew up in Mississippi. That was the first time I sat in a classroom with someone that looked like you because all before then, it was illegal. And I am so proud to be in San Antonio where we pause. And then we can even say, in San Antonio, we have the largest march in recognition of the movement. We have month-long celebrations and recognitions and then paying it forward. And then the whole conversation about diversity, equity, and inclusion, it continues to take on even deeper meaning. So I'm just proud to be a part of it. And I am proud to live through, uh, I do I dare say on TV, all of the labels that I carry. I've been a nigger. I've been a Negro. I've been colored. I've been black. And I've been African American. And you've been my dear friend. <laughs> and I love you. <laughs> and I love you too, Dr. Boston. Let's get some powerful thoughts from Reverend Ruth Martin from East St. Paul United Methodist Church. Let us pray. God of all generation, we enter into your presence with humility and thanksgiving. We are grateful for all of your provisions, especially the faithfulness of your servant, Dr. Martin Luther King, whose shoulders we stand on and whose voice has not been silenced. And so God, as a belated birthday gift, would you allow his dream to come true in this present day? In this present day, allow all mankind to sit at the table of authority authentic unity caused by a circumcised heart. Allow the sweltering heat of injustice and oppression to be extinguished by divine intervention. In this present day, deliver the dream in order that all will be judged by the content of their character and not by unfounded prejudices. Give this birthday gift to be a validation for the message against racism and genocide. Allow what was meant for evil to be turned for good while the tempest is raging. In this present day, allow consistent and fervent prayers of the righteous to be favored 
because we are confident, God, that you exist. Hear our prayer, O Lord, and grant us our plea. Allow the dream to come true so that the world will know just like Abel from the grave, you listen to virtue. So allow Dr. Martin Luther King's dream to triumph. Let it be done by the power enclosed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please join this prayerful body of believers here at ESP, East St. Paul United Methodist Church, 502 Caden, where we know that a family that pray together stay together. Please join us anytime. You are welcome. Thank you for joining our Dream Week celebration right here on Mission Park Cares. We're honored to keep the memory of Dr. Martin Luther King alive here in San Antonio. Please remember, we love you and at Mission Park, it's our mission to care. Dream, Dream big, big, San Antonio. San Antonio.